วัสดีค่ะพี่เต้สวัสดีค่ะพี่เต้สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะอ่าหนูฟ้านะคะเดี๋ยวนี้ฟ้าจะมาเป็นนิติก่อนเอเดี๋ยวอ่ายังไงพี่เต้จะลองแชร์สกรีนก่อนค่ะเดี๋ยวเราจะเลิกตอนเที่ยงสิบห้าใช่ครับผมโอเคค่ะก็จะค้างอย่างนี้ไว้นะคะพี่เต้แล้วก็เดี๋ยวฟ้าจะพูดเดี๋ยวฟ้าจะพูดเปิดนะแล้วก็เดี๋ยวจะฟีดเบอร์ฟอให้พี่เต้เลยก็เดี๋ยวพี่เต้ก็ท็อกวัดวันแมนโชว์เลยแล้วก็พอท็อกเสร็จก็จะเป็น Q&A นะคะแล้วก็พอคุยเสร็จก็ก็เสร็จแล้วตรงนี้ก็จะเป็นตอนสุดท้ายเดี๋ยวฟ้าก็จะมีสไลด์ของฟ้านิดหน่อยนี่ค่ะพี่เต้ยังไงเดี๋ยวอีกหนึ่งทีเราเริ่มกันอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่า
uh, some kind of critiques or redesign or just knowledge sharing in general. You can also visit my blog in on Medium as well. So uh, let's get to talk about our main topic today. So uh, first, let me take you back a couple months ago to May 22nd of this year. On that day, it was the election day of uh, for the new Bangkok governor. So it's a gubernatorial election or, or in simpler terms, it's just a governor election. So it was the first one in nine years. Uh, and this election in particular was very, um, people were very interested in how this would go. And that was a big like media outlet doing uh, covering this event. And it was a pretty big event, uh, not just on a, the Bangkok scale, but also on the national national level as well. And at the end of that day, we uh, we got our new governor, Prof. Ajahn Chachat Sitipan, who won by a landslide, and as we know, has been working as the governor since. But before that result came out, we have some of us may also have seen um, a couple, like actually several visualizations from multiple news outlet uh, showing the results of the elections. And I was actually involved in one of them. So the standard, uh, the news outlet, and we this uh, created this website to share information about the election, who are the candidates, um, how do we like, how, how, what's the rules and uh, what's the social trend at the moment. And I was also involved in designing the map, as you can see on the right here, um, showing the, the vote counting results. And today I will share more about that. But first, um, let me tell you a bit more about WeVis. So WeVis is a team working on data visualization, mostly about uh, political issues. And, and like we try to use data to kind of like analyze what's going on and show how issues impact our lives, that kind of thing. And this project is one of our projects where we kind of show how the election is going to, to the general public. And so today I would like to go into how I design these data visualizations for the election. But first of all, let me give you a quick demo of what we did. So if you go to, the, go to our website, you can see like, menus going to uh, pages for um, their biographies of the candidates, um, the map based election results, the rules for the election and those things. And for the map, as you can see here, see here on the left, we have like an overall overview of like who's winning by how much. And then on the right, we have the map view where you can inspect each district of Bangkok and kind of like go into the details of who's winning by how much for this specific district. And you can also change the view as well. We have multiple views for the map, which I'll go more into uh, a bit later. And we also have like other data sets like um, what, we, what, what you saw earlier was the results for the governor election. But we also had uh, have results for the council election as well, as well as, uh, as, well as um, the results for the 2013 election, which was the last time uh, Bangkok election was held. So 
let's get into the design process. So, um, sorry, let me fix this. Okay, so first of all, um, by designing the data visualizations, we have to understand first that data visualization is all about answering questions. So um, in the data vis community, there is known that um, two, there are two uses, main uses of data visualization. First is what we call exploratory data, data visualization. We visualize data so that we can see patterns that were unknown before. And the other one is storytelling. We visualize data to help illustrate some arguments to help persuade or convince people. In both cases, we are uh, still answering questions. So let's start first with, so what questions do people have about the elections? So we listed the questions that we want to be, that we want to answer in, in our visualization. For example, people might want to know like who's winning by how much was the margin? Is it a close election? Was my home district light like? Uh, how is each district voting? How many districts did this candidate win or did this party win? Um, is Bangkok basically like blue or red city? Is there a trend? Is there a geographical trend? Is there like, did people who voted for this particular party in this area still vote for the same party? That kind of thing. Or like how many council seats did each party win and et cetera. There are a lot of like different questions that people might be having while uh, like following the elections. So we aim to try to like answer a lot of these questions through our visualization. But uh, at the same time, we also have to look at what information we actually have, because like if you don't have them, we can't visualize it. So um, the data that we have, uh, the data we did, that we had included the live voting count, vote counting results for both the governor and the Bangkok council elections, and also like district by district results, as well as the progress percentage of the counting, turnout rate, uh, some exit polls, and also results from the previous election, which was in 2013. And besides that, there are also other um, data, which we could also gather that would help us design the visualization. So, uh, the data listed on the top part of this are things that you may think that like it's pretty straightforward, but the supporting data that we need are things that may not be like a direct uh, need, but it would help you visualize things and make it easier to look at so and and may help with other issues which i will cover in a minute so for example we have like district wise population count or like number of voters by district and we have the map of bangkok in in a format that would be uh programmable and that that we could use in our website and also um we would need things like party colors, um, party names, candidate names, uh, photos of each candidate that we would need for our visualization. So uh, now that we have all the information that we need, where do we start? First is, um, for those of you who study data visualization, you may have heard of the name Ben Schneiderman. He is a pretty influential figure in, in the field of data visualization. He, and he coined this mantra 
for designing uh, an exploratory data visualization. So you said that you should give uh, the audience overview first, zoom and filter, and then details on demand. So these are kind of like a formula that you can follow uh, to design a visualization. So first you would give an overview of what's going on, like in this rough sketch that I made. Um, in the main screen, you would give like an overview of like how many votes are each candidate, candidate getting and how is it going in each district. So this would be a quick glanceable overview of, of the data. And then you can also click on each district or each candidate to get more information about like the, uh, to, to drill down to that data and see what's going on at a, at a local level. So um, from that graph, we uh, ended up with this design and here's the end result of the design. So like I said earlier, um, data visualization is like about answering questions. So this view is designed to, to answer and overview questions of like, how is the election going? But um, like I said as well, so we design, um, we interpreted the, that question, how is the election going into multiple views. First is the overall like total vote counts and also district by district display of like the whole map of Bangkok. So um, people who are interested in how their home district is voting or how each, is there like a correlation between area and voting patterns can also look at the map to get that answered. So, uh, and also you can like, like I showed you earlier, you can also click on each district to see the detailed view of each district as well. So um, to kind of like go into more details of the design, let's start first from the, from the left part of the, the website, which, is bar, which are bar charts. Um, the reason I chose like this basic bar chart was that it's familiar to most people, it's easiest to, to look at and interpret. And um, from like psychology perspective, length is the easy, uh, is one of the most like discernible, um, I mean like comparable features of visual elements. So um, it's easier to compare length when stacked vertically or like in, in a general bar chart where it's stacked like uh, it's aligned horizontally. In this case, it's much easier to see like the ratio between the first and the second candidate as opposed to like if you move the second candidate to the right. So this would be a quick overview um, which would give you the like it's, it's the easiest to look at to, in terms of like who's winning and how by how much margin. And I also made this bar chart to become like a table so that users can also sort by name of the candidate or number of the candidates in case they are interested in a specific candidate. And on the right side of the website, um, for this map, we are trying to answer how is each district voting. But before we arrive at this grid map that you see here, we have also explored multiple ways to like arrange the districts. Because um, as you can see on the map on the lower left here, um, there are a lot of like of districts that are um, in the city center and they're very small as opposed to on the right. So we have to try to um, arrange them into, 
into a grid with one district as one block. And these are a few of our like experimentations. And when we do that, um, another problem arises, which is it's harder to locate the district. So for example, if we want to see where Lagrabang is in this map, it's much harder to, to find if you already know the map. So we also experimented with like labeling. At some point, we also try like coming up with abbreviations for each district, but we scratched that idea because it was not like the, the abbreviation was not standardized and people would have like a harder time locating than just showing the full level. And that's what we ended up with. Uh, we, we showed the full level. And also like we also added the river so for geographical refer reference. So um, for people who live in Bangkok, you may be like uh, familiar with the term like Phang Thon and Phang Pranakon, uh, which show, uh, which kind of like divide uh, the Bangkok area into the west side and the east side of the river. And by adding this river here, I, I tried to make it easier to locate for people to find their district. And for this map, the area of each block equal, uh, represents the voting population of that district. And I also added some legend at the bottom uh, and tried to make it concise so that it's easy to, to understand and to, um, to read what's going on on the map. But at this point, you may have uh, a few questions about the design. First is, why don't we just color the Bangkok map? And like, if this candidate wins, we just think it just like color it green or something like that. Um, so I would like to answer that by um, kind of like letting you know about how what's the usual goal of data visualization. So uh, a good visualization, in my opinion, should allow us to get an accurate understanding at a glance. So there are two parts of this. First is you would get some understanding or like answer some questions at a glance. This is about speed. You would have to get it uh, com uh, communicated quickly. And the second part is uh, you would need it to be accurate or else you would risk um, making misleading data visualizations. So if we go back to 2019, when in the United States, there was an impeachment ongoing against uh, then president, ex-president um, Donald Trump. So he posted this image on Twitter um, saying, try to impeach this, trying to communicate that like he's backed by the vast majority of the country. But um, so this map, this kind of map is called a coral plot. And it's basically like, you can just color each section of the map based on for elections, like who's winning or other uh, variables that you may have. And but if we actually look at the number of people who live in those districts, the picture changes to this. And this animation was created by Karim um, Dewey on Twitter. And it shows that these visualizations can be misleading if we are giving visual weight to the wrong thing. In this case, um, it's giving visual weight to the area of each, um, each area, the, the land area of each like um, county or something like that. But if we give visual weight to what actually matter, which is the number of people who voted in that district, um, the visualization changes. 
And if you want to go deeper into that, we can also plot it by um, the percentage of people who voted for a particular party as well. And for this specific problems, the data visualization community has came up with a few um, solutions. On the left is like a distorted map based on the number of population who resides in each area. And on the right, it's also like a distorted map, but try, they try to align it in grids to make it look nicer. So if we come back to our Bangkok example, um, we can see that like results from, if we look at the results from the 2013 election, if we try to answer, is this a red or blue city? We would see that um, Bangkok looks pretty much blue. If you look at the geographical map, we might see that maybe it's, it's maybe blue. You, you see a bit more red, but mostly it's still a blue city. But if we actually look at the election results, it's, it's of closer elections than you may think based on these visualizations. So this kind of like, ratio-based view would help us try to kind of like give a, it give a more accurate picture of what's going on in the election. So that's why we chose that as our main view. But also like some of you may have seen other visualizations from other elections and have questions like, why don't we just use um, need grids like other elections? Why do each district need to be like, uh, why do their areas need to be like varied or some small or some bigger? So for that, it comes down to the rules of each election. So for example, for the Thai general election, what matters is how many seats in the parliament you get. So one dot can equal to one seat, but for um, 2020 US presidential election, it depends on the electoral vote of each district. And by that, uh, from that, Bangkok election is based on popular votes. So we have to factor in every vote and the number of voter in each district to, to get an accurate picture of who's winning. And that's why we ended up with this um, design. So like I said, there are di different visualizations answer different questions. So um, the views I showed you earlier, we also provided them as alternatives to answer different questions. For example, this grid view, which is colored by the winner of that district is, um, can, can answer questions like how many districts this, this candidate win, which is very useful for the, council election, which will be determined by like who gets the most seats in the council. And for the map based um, view, it will help answer like in which area did the each candidate win. Um, this would help a lot with like familiarity um, and it's with some compromise on accuracy of the data and, and the visual data. But also you can get like geographical correlations of like people in the downtown tends to vote for this party more or something like that from this map. And I also uh, created this view where it's a list of all the districts with the, uh, the ratio of each candidate um, kind of like listed in, in a stacked manner like this. So this would be an easy comparison between like um, how is the, how are these two uh, districts voting patterns different or something like that. And it's easier to compare because like we have more horizontal space here than say like the, the grid view that I showed you earlier. 
So um, this, to conclude, like we, we design multiple views to answer different questions. And each of them have like different pros and cons so that we, at the end of the day, we um, decided to include all of them into our visualization and let the user choose which one um, answers their questions the best. So besides that, we also have to think about like the color use of our map because like a lot of um, our, so right now we are using only colors to represent the, the candidates and that may have some problems with like the colorblind population, which is like about 5% 5, 5 of all people. And we try to like add candidates faces to the, to the visualization or like add their number to the visualization. But at that scale where it's, it would be displayed at a very small um, size, this wasn't really a good idea. So we tried another approach, which is to try to pick a more colorblind friendly palette. We try to like change the saturation of the color. We try to change the value of the color. So for example, like if um, red is to be confused with green, we would make the green lighter and then the red more darker so that it's, uh, it, can, it can be distinguished between the two. And, but like, unfortunately for, or fortunately in this um, project, we got to use only one color here as the result. And another thing that we had to consider is that um, a lot of people will be coming in this website from mobile devices. From our statistics, um, most actually like 80% of people visited this website on mobile. So we also uh, prepared the mobile website as well. And we like, we had to move the layout a bit, like make the, the bar chart its own page and the map its own page because we don't have enough space to accommodate both in the same page. And we have to like move things around a bit so that it's uh, usable on mobile. And that's the, uh, and and that's how I how how we designed this website, and ended up with this end product. And actually, like I had a another section where I would want to talk about like what are other um other people. Uh, so like at that night, that election night, there are other media outlets that are also doing this kind of project, and there are multiple things that I like about their approach. But um, since we don't have a lot of time here, uh, please also feel free to maybe like download the slides, which I'll give you the link at the end. And uh, you can see what are the other examples I like. So um, to conclude, um, these are a few key takeaways for people who are um, listening in this session. So. First of all, this data visualization is all about answering questions at a glance with accurate understanding. Different visualizations answer different questions. And then uh, the mantra of the data visualization, which is overview first, zoom and filter, and then details on demand. And also don't forget about accessibility, like the color blind um, uh, example that I give, and also the use of mobile devices. So thank you for your attention today. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you so much. So um, shall we move to the next session today? Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, the first. Oh. Uh, could you say that again? <laughs> okay. Um, shall we move to the next session? Is that a Q&A session? Okay. Um, the first question is, what are the biases that might come from data visualization and what are the steps 
steps involved to avoid them? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, like like I show uh, earlier in our, in my presentation, um, some of the biases could come from not giving the visual weight to the things that matter. Um, if we give the visual weight to, let's say, like area of the district, as but when in reality there are like fewer people in these districts, it will give you like a biased picture of like what the election is really, uh, how how the election is going, like. Uh, like I show you in this um, example here. Yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Please feel free to like ask more. Okay. Um, uh, the next question, why not use things like different texture patterns for color by people? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, we also thought about that, but uh, one thing I didn't show here is that we also wanted to um, differentiate if each district vote counting is not final, if like if the data is still live and not like final. So if you look at the website on election night, there will be like patterns of like stripe loading kind of pattern on top of these. And we think that adding patterns to the color would kind of like interfere with that pattern and make it more like uh, harder to look at. And that's why we went with the approach of like um, tweaking the colors so that uh, it's easier for people to, to like distinguish between them. Okay, thank you so much. And the next question, I'm not sure it's going to be the last or not, um, sure. is that how often and to what degree do you have to compromise detail in order for the information to remain easily digestible? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is a very good question because like a lot of the times in data visualization, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Uh, let me show you this page. So um, we, like I showed earlier, uh, we chose this grid view as the, the default view, the main view, which, uh, and this view would give the most accurate representation of like the voting, of like how Bangkok is voting, but at the cost of like, it becoming a bit harder to read. And other views are like easier to read. Uh, geographic map is what most people would expect when you look at like election maps and those things. But um, if we use that map, you would also have to compromise how accurate your data, uh, how, how accurate your, your communication is in terms of like, is Bangkok, dominated by this candidate or this party. Um, so yeah, those are the choices the, we had to make. And each of these uh, has their own like pros and cons. And at the end of the day, as a designer, you have to like decide which would be the default, which would be your I would say like the positioning of your website. Do you want it to be the most accurate out there? Do you want it to be the easiest to look at? If there are solutions that would, um, that would be the best of both worlds, that would be best. But most of the time you have to like make some compromises like this one. So we chose this view, which is the most accurate, but it may be a bit harder to read. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Jezal, for um, the questions. Um, thank you, Mr. Tanovit for Song Phong Chai for your talk today. It's such a pleasure to know what is happened behind the recent 
bank of governor election that I can assure you that the most of us would never know if you are not talking about it today. Right. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much again for your talk. Me on behalf of Sam Carey University, hope that we're going to have you give us such an interesting technology next time. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also, um, if you want to get a copy of this uh, slide, please also feel free to like visit this, this URL as well. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and it's time for um, our events. What is the upcoming event that we're gonna have? Okay. And get ready for spring 2023 admission, master degree and PhD in electrical and computer engineering ECE and artificial intelligence and computer engineering ARCE will be open for admission from the 1st August to the 1st September 2022. For more information, please visit our website or scan this QR code. Uh, are you ready for CMKL Open House 2022? A good chance to get to know us more with our program, curriculum, and many more. Please stay tuned for registration and see us on October the 1st, 2022. And this excellent camp is that. Is this an inclusive three days camp, which is designed to help students immerse in the field of technology. Please stay tuned for legislation and miss us the mid of October at here, CMK University. You are warmly invited to join our AIEI online workshop on the topic of development optimization and application of vision AI models for industry use cases. In this workshop, we will explore the latest AI model in vision Overview of Deep Dream, TRO, pretend models, optimization with TensorRT, and deployment with Tritons. Register now by scanning this QR code and miss us on July 22nd, 2022. And for our next episode, you will meet Mr. Kanyutapong Nopakun. He, he will give us a talk in the topic of how AI is changing the music industry. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this talk and see you next time. Bye-bye.